Hi there, everyone. Welcome to Stampin' Up! with Jamie. Uh, my name is Jamie, and I am a Stampin' Up! Independence Demonstrator, if you're not familiar with who I am. Um, thanks for checking out this video either live or on replay, either on YouTube, my blog, or anywhere else you happen to find it. Um, I'm going to be making uh, some Easter card, uh, Easter card tonight and um, a treat box, which I'm super excited about. I have to say, I sent my husband to the grocery store like a couple of hours ago and I was like, buy me something Easter. <laughs> and he went with my son and uh, they picked out this like Easter chocolate bunny. And so I pedazzled it up about a half an hour ago and I think I have all the measurements and everything ready and good for us. And so I'm going to make that as well. But while you're coming in, tell me where you are from. Say hello. Um, hi, Michelle and Heather's here. Uh, Terry and Karen. Hi, everyone. Happy Wednesday evening. Lisa's here. Hi, Lisa. I just emailed you yesterday. <laughs> I'm so glad to have everyone here with me tonight. Thank you so, so much for joining me. I hope everyone's doing well. Certainly staying healthy. Enjoying, hopefully for you, some um, spring weather and I have to say I was crafting with the stamp set um, for tonight that I'm gonna be using and it just oh it makes me want spring so much of course it's called springtime joy so it's kind of like uh, it's there hi Lori hi Tammy and Debbie's here Connie hi everyone thanks for joining me I just so appreciate you coming out and spending some time with me tonight 3D projects, Terry, I don't do them very often. And actually, I try and stay away from them because I find them a little intimidating, um, to be quite honest. But I did a whole bunch of them for my um, Sweet Creations event in a couple of weeks. All the prizes are pedazzled up and um, all were decorated and whatnot. So I've gotten a little bit more comfortable with them. <laughs> um, lots of scrap paper testing and making sure measurements all right and whatever. So, um, so it's fun. Okay. Just a couple of reminders. I have a couple things going on right now. Anyone who places an order through me in the month of March, sorry, they're like out of reach. Okay, there we go. Um, next m April, next month, I am ordering annual catalogs. Oh my goodness, I am so excited. Like, it can't be here uh, fast enough. So March 24th, all demonstrators actually get to see it. And then April 1st, we can order catalogs and I will get them out to you just as soon as they arrive. Now, this is this um, year's annual catalog. So it's not this one, <laughs> um, but they all come with like the glued um, binding in it. If you would like an upgraded um, spiral bound binding, <laughs> um, just place an order through me in the month of March of $50 or more, and you will automatically be upgraded to a spiral bound catalog. And uh, this is huge. Um, oops, I got a little bit of washi tape on that one um, because the spiral bound makes it, lay flat it's just really user friendly and easy to flip through and really and really nice so the box that sits in the corner that is taunting me because i'm not allowed yes you cannot open it yet i mean you could <laughs> but i would encourage you not to for the event i'm so excited i know everything that's inside i love surprises i love surprises <laughs> So, um, okay, so back to the catalog. If you would like an upgrade, if you've placed an order through me in the last year, you will automatically be mailed to the catalog. You don't have to let me know. I have that list of names all ready to go. You will automatically be mailed one. If you would like the spiral bound one, now you just have to place that order through me in the month of March. And if you do, I'll automatically upgrade yours. Um, if you do not currently have a demonstrator that you order from and would like to request a catalog, I'd be happy to get that to you. Um, you can email me. If you go to jamieb.com, that will break, take you to all my links and you can request a catalog um, that way. And I do want to let you know that anybody, anytime, all year round, 365 days a year, any order over $50, automatically earns you a free $9 item for me that you choose. So I don't choose it. I let you know what would you like and some pick cardstock and some pick embellishments and some pick adhesive, whatever, whatever you'd like. So any order over 50, 365 days a year at least, um, will get you that free item. And I also offer my star rewards, which is like, like a retail store's um, 
rewards program for every increment of $25 in an order, you earn a free star. And once you've accumulated 12 stars, you get a free $30 order through me. So um, let's say you place a $50 order, um, you would get that free $9 item and two stars. So once you accumulate those 12, you get a $30 shopping spree through me. That's pretty exciting. So uh, <laughs> Michelle, it's like taunting you. Open me, open me. <laughs> That's funny. I know it's inside. There's goodies in there. <laughs> I love surprises. Oh, they make me so happy and so excited. Okay. So that's it. Those are kind of all the announcements I have um, right now. Again, catalog. Um, I do have my March class to go for anyone that purchases the be the Butterfly Brilliance collection in March. Um, and I think that's about it. I'm so happy you all are here with me tonight or catching this on replay. Goodness, I'm grateful for you watching. So I'm going to flip the screen around. I'm going to show you my projects. I'm really excited. And we have that 3D um, project I'm going to be doing. Now you make me all nervous because I never do them. <laughs> I wasn't so nervous until now. Um, everyone's like, oh my gosh, you're doing a 3D project? And I'm like, I know, I can't believe it. <laughs> so if you tend to get um, seasick easily or dizzy easily, just kind of look away for a second. I'm going to try and cover um, the camera on my phone while I flip it up. And just for a second, you'll look at my ceiling until I get you looking down again. So just bear with me. I'm going to cover this. Oop, I always forget. I, you see my forehead. There we go. Let me just rearrange my camera here for you and we'll get going. Okay, let me get my seat up higher too. Hi, Megan from Michigan. I can do it. Thank you, Karen. You're like the queen of all things fancy. So if you're encouraging me, <laughs> I feel good. <laughs> this is the card we're going to make, okay? I um, am playing with the Springtime Joy and... um. If you were talking to us, oh, <laughs> um, so the springtime joy, and I'm, it's pretty like a simpler card, I have to say, but I, that's just kind of my style. And I've just embraced that that's the way I like to stamp is a simpler card with maybe some details and, and whatnot. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm a little hoarse. I don't know where that came from. I did do an even simpler version of it. So, you know, I'd like to show you maybe what a beginner might let, be interested in, in doing and how to use something in a very, very simple, minimal way. And this is just paper and ink um, and like our stamp and blend. So I just stamped a couple of the images, the sentiment. I have two, three, well, if you count white, three colors of cardstock. So Highland Heather, Daffodil Delight, and then your basic white. For stamps, you would just need the Memento Black ink. And then um, Daffodil Delight, Highland Heather, Granny Apple Green. And I think that's, that is, I know it is, Flirty Flamingo um, stamp and Blend. So super, super simple, but I think it's just really, really pretty. And it comes together really nicely. And so, you know, we don't always have to, like go all the way out. I mean, all, you know, off the top, which I do like. I mean, I do like cards with all the bells and whistles. Don't get me wrong. But I think there's also something really sweet about simple, minimal cards. So that's kind of my version. If you're a beginner stamper, you know, just start small, make beautiful, simple cards. That's all. This is the card that I'm going to be making live. And then you're ready for my 3D. Oh my goodness. I can't believe I even did this. It's not anything too over the top. It's just a belly band. I was considering making a box, but I'm like, holy cow, <laughs> I'm not quite there yet. I was going to make a box like it sets in, um, but I didn't, I just didn't have the time. My husband got back from the grocery store and then we had dinner and it was kind of like running around crazy. So just a simple belly band and I'll give you the measurements and it, it that's really simple. Okay. So let's just dive in with the card. Let me show you the stamp set, the inspiration. This is just so cute. Oh my goodness. If you're making spring cards or Easter cards, you need this stamp set. And let me tell you, what are we? We are March 10th. You can still order in time for Easter. I, on the East Coast, like to calculate about 10 days from date of order from the date I get it give or take a little bit. Obviously, if you're on the East, I mean, on the West Coast or more Midwest, it'll get to you quicker. 
East Coast, I figure about 10 days. So if you don't have a fun Easter spring stamp set, I highly recommend this one. It's just a standalone stamp set. There's no coordinating dies, but just really, really cute images. Oh my goodness. And I, I just love that butterfly. It's just like a simple little touch um, to add to your cards. So having said all that, I am going to get started. You should see my desk. I have quite the stuff everywhere. <laughs> oh, but I have a ton of Stampin' Blends. That's really what's everywhere. Okay. I wish I lived by you. I could help you get more comfortable 3D. Oh my gosh, Terry, do you make them a lot? I would love any tips or tricks, tricks you have. I just am not very good with measurements. Even to do like the simple belly band, I it took me like, I don't know, five tries to get maybe even more to get the, the measurements right on it. Um, as you can see, I kind of did an oops there. Um, so yeah, I would love any tips or tricks on how to like measure and, and stuff. <laughs> yes, please share. I would love it. I would love, love, love it. Honestly, or anyone, anyone that does like 3d projects, I would love any tips and tricks. So this here is Highland Heather. It is five and a half by eight and a half scored at four and a quarter down the middle. And I'm just, um, what's that called? Not creasing it. That word, <laughs> I guess creasing it will work. Um, okay, then I have a panel of, let's see here. A panel of, um, I almost said Whisper White, it's not Whisper White, it's Basic White cardstock. This is three by five and a half. So it's the full length of the card, three inches high. And I'm going to stamp first, uh, let's see here. I have so many stamps here blocked up and ready to go. I have the bunny, I have the little basket, which is so stinking cute. And I have the chick, and then I have the little butterfly to do in the corner. So, now, unless you're using a Stamparatus, which I'm not, but unless you are, Nobody wants my 3D projects. They only want cards. Oh my gosh. I love 3D projects. I think they're so fun. Burnish. There you go. Thank you, Heather. I never know these words. You know that. I always get tongue tied and I'm like, what's that word? <laughs> I never remember. So unless you're using the Stamparatus, you know, your placement is always going to be a little, little different, right? So I'm aiming left. Is it going to be in the exact spot? My sample? Probably not. Probably not. And I'm using probably not the right block I should be using, but I ran out of blocks because I have so many stamps I'm using. So I'm going with that, the long one. I think it's D I was using. Oh, no, it's H. Sorry. So first the bunny, stamping it in memento black ink. Next, I'm going to do the basket. Got a little fuzzy on it. Hold on. There we go. And I'm going to, I'm stamping these all in memento black. So really, you know, it uses minimal inks. It's more heavy on the Stampin' Blends to color everything in. So you usually give, oh, I missed it. What did it say? I usually give my 3D projects as gifts stuffed with candy. Oh, and who doesn't love candy? Especially for Easter. Hello. That's the thing. My husband came home with this candy. Now I have three kids. He came home with one box of candy and they were all like, well, who's that for? <laughs> Like, who gets the candy? And I'm like, actually, none of you do. <laughs> I'm going to use it tonight. And they were all bummed. <laughs> okay. Oh, my gosh. Julie's the best. Yes, I do follow her. She goes, yes. Actually, I follow her because you follow her. Um, you have me watching her, believe it or not. She does really great projects. But, again, I don't know how you do the measuring. That's the part that, that kind of gets me. I'm like, how do you, how do you know the measurements? I'm, I was never like a whiz in math. Give me anything crafty and I can figure it out. Well, maybe except a 3D project. Um, but I just, I don't know. I don't get the math behind it. Okay, so then the little butterfly, which I think is honestly like my favorite part of it. It's just so cute. Look at that. Such a cute little butterfly. I love them. Okay, so everything is stamped in memento black ink across the board and we're gonna have to we're gonna use that again I'm gonna set this aside just to dry a little bit more and um I think I did this separately hold on let me cut a piece of Highland Heather hold on give me a second talk amongst yourselves <laughs> I didn't realize I mean I I just forgot give me a second here 
So I'm gonna cut a separate piece of Highland Heather to do the stamping, this kind of stamping along the edge, um, just because it's easier to kind of manage. If I were to stamp on this, it may not lay flat on the folded part. I just find it's easier. Oh yeah, that's true about jelly, and it does remind me of Precious Moments. That's true. Huh, I guess I never thought about that before, but you're right. Okay, so what I did is I took the two flowers and I just put them on the same block. Honestly, it's so much easier <laughs> to just block them up together than to um, stamp one and stamp the other and stamp one and stamp the other. So I just put them next to each other on a block. Just so much easier. Um, and then I'm going, oh, I didn't grab it. Hold on, I got to reach for my high, oops. <laughs> Everything falls. And I'm just going to literally, I'm not going to overthink it. It's not going to be perfectly kind of spaced out, but I'm going to roughly kind of start in the center. And I just kind of want the tips of the, oh my goodness, my daughter's friend is calling her. I hope that didn't pause the video. <sighs> I'm going to have her head. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. I hope that didn't pause the video. I hope everyone's with me still. My daughter's friend was calling her and usually it pauses the video. So hopefully it didn't. Um, okay. So I'm just, I'm not like overthinking this. I'm just kind of trying to somewhat stamp evenly across, but I'm sure they're not perfectly sized. So, um, it blipped, but came back in after that. Oh, I'm going to kill her. <laughs> I mean, not literally, not literally figuratively speaking. Gosh, I just said that on live TV or live <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> um, oh, good. Okay. A little blip. Okay. I'm going to have to talk to her because yeah, <laughs> that's, that's rough. <laughs> okay. So all I did was stamp along the top and the bottom. I'm going to set that aside. I did that because sometimes if you go right into coloring something that you've stamped with your memento black, it's still a little wet and it can kind of smear a little bit. It did pause. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that happened. I apologize. I'm going to have to tell my daughter not to have them call while I'm doing a Facebook Live. Um, okay, so I pulled out all my pastels for this. I mean, I pulled it all out for, I mean, it's Easter, right? It's an Easter basket. It has to be pastels. I mean, it doesn't have to be. Um, but I don't know. When I think Easter, I think pastels. So that's the way I went. Okay, that's just, <laughs> to me, they kind of go hand in hand. So um let's see here dark crumb cake what's this one light crumb cake okay so it's gonna take me a little bit but but mom exactly I know Karen look I don't even know how many colors are in this card but I think it, it works because it's an Easter basket and it's only that oh my gosh she keeps calling I'm going to have her head <laughs> oh my gosh see right about now if I wasn't like you know in a live video I'd be like stop I'd be like yelling stop go but then that would like you know make you all deaf so nobody wants to hear me scream okay so I'm starting with the crumb cake the light crumb cake the brush and I oh my goodness Karen you're right three more than three colors and a 3d project Jeez, what's going on <laughs> and yellow there's yellow in the card too Yellow in the card. I'm using yellow cardstock. Jamie, come back. I'm here, Connie. I'm sorry. Oh my goodness. Leave it to my youngest. She's such a social butterfly. She just has to be talking to her friends. She's like 11 going on, I don't know, 21 or something. <laughs> okay, so that's, I just used crumb cake for the basket. I'm going to set that aside for now. I'm going to need it um, for the inside. And then I'm just going to color my Easter eggs. Oh, my gosh. And now the cat's meowing. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Honestly, you'd think my life was pure chaos. And actually, it kind of is. But, oh, my goodness. I close, I'm in the basement because that's where my – we have a finished basement. So that's where my, my um, crafting desk is and crafting space. And I always close the door, the basement door, because – um, actually, I'm going to go ahead and do the flowers, too, while I'm at it, while I have the Stampin' Blends. So I, I close the door because, you know, the people up there, my family are up there and talking and whatnot. And so I close the door, but I guess a cat got stuck down here with me. Okay, so that was Balmy Blue. Of 
course, we had to go with a light blue. Now we have petal pink. I'm just gonna, I'm coloring one egg and one flower in the bunny's hair. I think this bunny is just so cute. You're having one of those days too, Roz. I feel like I'm having one of those weeks. <laughs> it's just been a rough, it's been a rough week around here. I don't know about anyone else, but oh, I feel like I need the reset button. Um, then this is Highland Heather. It's just been a little rough. We'll get through. Just a little rough. <laughs> Anyone else? Oh, glory. Um, okay, so I'm taking my time. This one's I'm definitely using the more fine tip end of... Whoops. That just kind of crept over there a little bit. Fine tip end of um, the markers just because... It's such a small space you're working in. You definitely want to just take your time and not rush it. Okay, last but not least, I have Daffodil Delight. And there's a little one over there. And then our last butterfly. Or not butterfly. Oh my goodness, I just called that a butterfly. It's a flower. <laughs> oh, glory. Okay, and while I have my Daffodil Delight out, I'm going to just do the, the duck. At least I rip. And that would be my cat knocking over something uh, i know i totally forgot karen to the rescue all day you laugh karen all day today my husband was like don't forget about your life tonight don't forget about your life tonight don't forget about your like i don't forget my facebook ones i forget my youtube ones <laughs> i just haven't done them long enough to you know have the habit you know i don't think i've forgotten i've almost forgotten a wednesday one early on I almost forgot one, but I don't know if I've completely forgotten one. <laughs> oh, glory. Thank you, everyone, for showing me grace and for being patient with me. I just appreciate it so much. Honest to goodness. Okay. Oh, I forgot to get the orange out just for his little beak there. Okay, so Daffodil Delight on our duck. He's so cute. I'm just going to grab, I forgot the light pumpkin pie just for his nose. He needs an orange nose. Isn't he so sweet? Oh my goodness, he's so cute. And then I did some um, Highland Heather for the butterfly. I'm trying not to take too long, but I am also trying to color in the lines. So, and I don't know, I didn't color in the little dots. I guess I could have colored them in with like the darker Highland Heather, but I kind of like the white dots, honestly. I think I'm starting to need glasses. I would I just squinted to see that, oh my goodness. Um, well, okay. Then for the bunny, just on these little, like, um, what would you call those? These little folds, I guess. I don't know. Um, I used the light petal pink just to, I literally just colored over those lines and maybe like around his face or her face and a little bit on his, her, um, ears just kind of going over the lines that are kind of already there but just giving a little bit of of color you can't really see it it's like super subtle um but it's there and then there's a few leaves on here so i use soft sea foam again i'm sticking with the pastels it's easter card so very fitting to just color in those petals like so Okay, whew, we got this. Okay, hold on, I gotta move all my, my markers to my other side, because <laughs> I need my stamp and emboss machine here soon, so I gotta make room, okay. For this sentiment, I'm using, you're gonna need a piece of balmy blue cardstock, and I'm using the sentiment, again, straight from the Springtime Joy uh, sen um, stamp set, it's, what does it say, it says, oops, Easter is a lovely reminder of new beginnings. Um, believe it or not, I don't have a lot of stamp sets for Easter. I couldn't believe it. I went hunting and I really don't have many. So um, that's what we went with. And I could have sworn, hold on, give me a second. Maybe I didn't. I thought, no, I guess I didn't. Oh, there it is. Oh my goodness, it's sitting right on top of my thing. Okay, so I still use this, the um, embossing buddy. I know Stampin' Up! doesn't sell it anymore, but it's kind of your best friend when you're embossing. So I still use it. I usually don't use products that Stampin' Up! doesn't sell anymore. Um, that's not current, but that one I still do use. Okay, 
So, um, piece of balmy blue cardstock, your Versamark white embossing powder, and then I have my sentiment ready to go. And I have my heat tool ready to go. Okay. Oops. So I'm gonna ink up my sentiment nice in my Versamark ink. I'm gonna stamp it on. You know what I just realized? I hope this, <laughs> oh my goodness, I hope this cardstock's big enough. It should be. If not, we're doing it again. Sprinkle it generously with your embossing powder. Embossing, I think it's still my one of my favorite things to do when stamping, my um, favorite technique. Um, I just remember doing it for the first time and being like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. And it really hasn't gotten old. I still, every time I do it, I think I go, oh my gosh, that's amazing. It's just so cool. And it's super easy. It's not like it takes a huge amount of, like you don't have to have a lot of experience. <laughs> um, okay, so sprinkle it with your white embossing powder. Turn your heat tool on. I usually wait until it gets a little hot. Then put it close to what you stamped and when you notice that it goes from a powder to a nice shiny gloss you're good to go it's really that easy and quick okay so to cut it out I'm using my favorite dies if you do not have these dies you absolutely need them the stitched shapes oh did I not use that size did I use the next size smaller hold on Oh, I did. Okay. I'm like, this is huge. So I use the circle. It's about two and three quarters round. Okay. And look at this. It's like the old, um, old, whatever that's called. And it's just like, I've used them so much. If you do not have them, I highly recommend them just because they're so versatile. You can use them for, I use them all the time. They're probably my most used um, item like apart from a trimmer or something like that when I cut it out I'm gonna kind of put the die a little to the right so the sentiments are um, more flush to the left just because I'm gonna be chopping it off a little bit so I'm gonna kind of it's not gonna cut dead center I'm gonna kind of have it a little bit to the left yeah packaging I was going I think I was gonna say branding was the word but you know in the moment I never I never remember these things. I always remember them after. Okay. And then I'm gonna run that through my die cutting machine. And this is what we get, push it out. Oh, I love it. <laughs> and then, okay, so let's just start putting everything together. I have a panel of Daffodil Delight cardstock. It's just one eighth bigger. So three and one eighth by five and a half. And I'm going to just adhere our stamped panel on this Daffodil Delight panel. I'm going to then adhere our Highland Heather stamped, the one that has the flowers on the ends, on the card front. Now, again, you don't have to do a separate piece, but... I don't know, it could be a little challenging. I find, just do another piece, it's just easier. Okay, then we're going to adhere the Daffodil Delight. Oh, I think I adhered that down with dimensionals. Oh, I most certainly did. Of course I did. <laughs> when don't I use dimensionals? That was silly, did I use dimensionals? Of course I use dimensionals. I use dimensionals all the time. Oh my goodness, what was I thinking? That was silly. So, pulled the backings off. Oops. That backing is holding on for dear life. Oops. Oh my gosh, it really doesn't want to go. Okay, so we're going to aim for center and straight, more or less. And then we're going to tack the sentiment. I think I went a little lower here, but I don't know. I don't think I want to go too, too low. Maybe like there. And guess what? I know you're going to be shocked. I used dimensionals. <laughs> of course I used dimensionals. Oh my goodness, I use them all the time. I feel like I should take out stock. <laughs> um, like there. And then all I did is I just flipped my card around and gave it a little haircut. Like that. You could, I mean, I guess I could have fit the full circle on, um, but I know, whole dimensionals. Don't show Amy. Don't tell her. Shh. 
<laughs> um, I guess you could fit the whole circle on, but I kind of like it cut off on the end. I just like that look. Then I, of course, had to add a ribbon. And so I pulled out the Daffodil Delight Ruched Ribbon. And I'm going to do my fork bow because that's the only kind of bow I do. I am a diehard <laughs> fork bow. That's the only way I'll make a fork. I mean a bow. Tomorrow, um, be sure to check out my card because I share another tip on how I do ribbon <laughs> because I, I'm not a huge bow maker so I like to cheat all the time so if you're you if you're not familiar with a fork bow I usually just zip right through this but inevitably someone's watching that isn't too familiar so you go across the front and I just use a fork like a kitchen fork a big one across the front and behind then you're going to take this one and go over this ribbon and then through your middle notch like so and then you just kind of pull everything taut so you have this guy kind of hanging out the back and then now this one goes through the middle as well and then you tie a knot snip it i usually don't cut my ribbon ahead of time because i don't want to well i don't want to be too short and i don't want to be have x like way too much either so i don't want to be wasteful so i usually cut once it's on the fork tie your knot nice and tight slip it off your whoops slip it off your fork and then fluff your bows and you will get a perfect bow every time it's the only way i do it and then i usually like tails really really long but these are these are a bit much <laughs> so even these i'm going to trim a little so i just kind of pull them together i do one and then i pull the other one over and then just match that length okay and then all I do is I take, um, gosh, I have no extra, well, I guess I'll use this one, even though it has the sentiment on it. All I do is, first of all, I straighten it out and make it look pretty. Okay, then I put a glop. Yes, that's a technical term. You can Google exactly how much is a glop. No, just kidding, I don't know. <laughs> put a glop on. I put my ribbon over and then I put a block and I literally, I'm gonna, push it to the side and let it sit. And then I'll come back, probably when I'm all done here, it'll be pretty good to go. Um, you're, it'll be all glued. For the inside, all I did was a simple basket. Simple, simple, keeping it super simple. I just wanna make, okay, yeah. Four by five and a quarter. And I'm going to stamp the basket in Memento Black. The same thing, I already did it once, so I'm gonna, really try to zip through tonight's going to be a little longer just because i'm doing the card and the 3d project so um bear with me as i get all my um stampin blends out again and i'm going to need them for the for the lamb as well i was like what animal is that <laughs> it's not a bunny i already stamped the bunny okay so what does everyone do for Easter? You know, it's kind of coming up. I don't know. What is it, like three weeks away? Um, what do you usually cook? I'm always intrigued by what people cook for Easter. My husband always is asking, can we cook a lamb? And I'm not actually not a huge fan of lamb. Um, and so we usually do like a ham, but he doesn't really, I mean, we eat a ham, but he's not. I don't know. He's always like, let's try something dinner different. One time we cooked steaks. That was like, so like, what in the world? We cooked steaks for Easter. They were good. Just odd. It was weird having steaks for Easter. I'm, I like my traditions. I like, you know, prime rib is Christmas. Ham is Easter. So um, do you cook? And if you do, what do you cook? I, I would love to know. Okay, so I'm gonna zip through this again. I'm probably not gonna color them as well as I did the first time. Um, although they're, ooh, that's the dark one. Oh, I pulled the pumpkin pie one. Oh my goodness, okay, that, <laughs> that Easter egg is gonna be a little darker than the other one. No big deal. Um, I don't even know if I'm coloring them in the same order. I don't, I, I guess it doesn't really matter, really. Jillian cooks a ham, okay. Sort of green vegetables. How, how do you say that? Au gratin? <laughs> I don't know, that sounds so, that sounds so, you know, if, as they say about um, English speaking people that say Spanish, that sounds so green, gringa. 
au gratin. <laughs> we used to do a ham with baked sweet potatoes. Ooh, that sounds good. I guess ham is kind of the thing to do, right? Um, let's see here, Daffodil Delight. I guess I just would like to try something different one year. But then I say that, but I really don't because I like my traditions. I like my ham on Easter, so I say that, but I guess I don't really mean it. Um, Aw gratin. Really? Is that how you say it? It sounds so harsh, gratin. Okay, I'm done with this. I'm going to set it aside. Aw gratin. I'm going to have to do one of those like Google things where it tells you how to do pronounce pronounce something. Mm, that sounds delicious, Lisa. I have, my best friend makes cheesy potatoes. They're so good. Okay, here we go. We can do this. I can do this, and you are going to be gracious and patient with me. <laughs> okay, so here's the thing. I have a Russell Stover, just plain, nothing special, nothing fancy, milk chocolate Easter bunny. Okay, this is... It's like four and three quarters by seven and a half. So if your chocolate bunny is a different size, obviously you have to sort of adjust the measurements. Um, but that's what mine measures if you want to follow my measurements. I mean, this is kind of standard. What will change would be the belly band back here. Well, vegetable lasagna, that sounds good. Gras, like brat, as in bratwurst. Oh, that's smart. Oh, gras. <laughs> Oh my goodness, this is too funny. Okay, so you may have to adjust your measurements. I'm going to tell you my measurements that I use, but keep in mind, obviously, if you have a different sized chocolate bunny, you're going to have to adjust it accordingly. So I have a panel of Highland Heather uh, cardstock. This is two and a half <laughs> by 11. So it's a full length sheet of a cardstock and then two and a half wide it's not going to be long enough to go all the way around so what i also have is just a little piece of highland heather which is two by two and a half just to kind of um be in the middle like where the seam it's it doesn't come together so underneath this lamb is this little piece you don't see it it's covered um but it's not big enough okay so Let's start with this guy. I'm going to set this one aside and grab. I'm going to use the Simply Score because it's a lot easier to use when you're doing a lot of scoring, like across. If you have the trimmer, there is a scoring blade on it as well that will work. But I love the score. It gives a nice deep um, score, and I find it's just a little easier to use when, especially like with a band when I'm doing multiple um, score lines. So <laughs> here we go. <laughs> I'm going to score at one and three quarter, two and five eighths, seven and a half, and eight and three quarters. Okay, so I'll say it again. One and three quarter, two and five eighths, seven and a half, and eight and three quarters. Okay, that's what I scored mine on. If you have a different sized chocolate bunny box, whatever you're using, what I would recommend is to just hold whatever. Now, this is what I do. Again, where's Terry? Terry, if you have a different advice, chime in for sure. All I do, this is my cheat sheet notes, is I literally just will wrap my cardstock around and then give like a crease and then just measure where those crease lines are. That's like my cheating. To at least to get an idea of where I'm starting and then if I need to kind of adjust, I do. So I'm going to just fold really well on those scored lines like so. Okay. So you'll see it's not quite big enough. So. I'm going to take that piece of two and a half by two and I'm going to just, <laughs> I'm going to um, just make it work. And let's see here. How do I want to do this? I think I want to do it this way. This is how I did it before too. So that one and then, and then this one. I love this tear and tight, tear and tape. And then I'm going to peel it off, peel the little sticker off, peel the little sticker off. And then 
I'm going to use this to kind of give me a little oomph. Okay. So I'm, oops, gosh, that was almost close. I'm keeping my kind of <laughs> fixer upper here in the middle and I'm just gonna fold over one side and adhere it and then fold over one side and adhere it. And you'll see, I mean, I've, oops, it was pretty close to being like all the way around. It's like what, a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit more than a quarter of an inch short. It was close, but not quite big enough that you needed something to kind of connect the two pieces. And um, this little bit here is gonna cover it, so we're gonna be fine. Next, I have um, a Highland Heather uh, pattern from the Subtles Designer Series paper. And um, this here, let's see, what did my notes say? <laughs> is two and a quarter by four and five eighths. Two and a quarter by five and eight, five, hold on, here we go. Two and a quarter by four and five eighths. Then I have a panel that's gonna be matted on of basic white that is two and three eighths by four and three quarters, okay? Two and three eighths, four and three quarters. And they're just gonna get adhere, oops, adhered one over the other. And then that's gonna go uh, on my card front. Not my card front, oh my goodness, it's not a card. It's my 3D project front, how about that? That just rolls right off the tongue. <laughs> okay, there we go. Just, it's a little long probably than I would normally do, but it's fine. And actually I'm gonna use my bunny cause he'll give me a little oomph when I'm adhering that down. So one side over there, one side over there and press down. Hi Renice, welcome home from work. I hope you had a good day working. I hope it wasn't super stressful for you today. Okay, so there's that, we're getting there. <laughs> You all are so patient with me today. I love it. Thank you so much. So now you're going to need a panel of basic white. This is where we're going to stamp the lamb, cut her out. Okay, she's going to get stamped in memento black ink. You got to leave enough room. I am going to cut her out with an oval. So just make sure, you know, it's long enough that you um, have space <laughs> to cut it out. I've done that before. Um, okay, while that's drying, just a second, I'm also going to need a square vellum doily. I had forgotten about these, and one of uh, my teammates used it in a card the other day, and I was like, oh my gosh, those doilies, they're so fun. So, of course, I had to use it. I pulled it out. So, um, I have that ready to go. To color the lamb, I'm going to color the flowers just like I colored them before, so you're, re you're really getting an idea how I color these flowers. I mean, you're going to know it better than I do in a second. Um, they are a little bigger on the lamb than the bunny, but same style. I didn't color the inside. Um, I don't know. Oh, I thought that was going to stain for a second. I'm going to start all over again. Okay, Highland Heather. Then we're done with it. Um, where's my other Daffodil Delight? There it is. Daffodil Delight. Do you notice that I saved the small little details for the yellow? I'm like, nobody needs that much yellow. We'll have it be a slight detail as opposed to like this purple one that's like the biggest in front and center. Daffodil Delight, done. Balmy blue, here we go. I'm, I'm pushing my luck using the brush stroke in an effort to go faster. I hope it doesn't, you know, bite me. Okay, balmy blue, done. Next, petal pink. Make sure I grab the petal pink and not the pumpkin pie this time okay petal pink petal pink done <laughs> can you tell I love accomplishment like being able to check things off my list like those colors done moving on I love a sense of accomplishment when you get something done okay so soft sea foam on our leaves here done let me just add a little bit of a little darker, although gosh, you can barely see it because they're so small, but I like to think you can see it. Done. Next, I have the light smoky slate, uh, uh, what's this called? Blending, um, oh my goodness, what is this? Stampin' Blends, holy cow, I got all tongue tied. And I'm gonna use the fine point end and I'm gonna just, just like I did with the bunny before, I'm gonna kinda go over the lines that are already part of the stamped lines 
and I'm literally just kind of tracing them to add just a little bit of contour to our bunny. Not all of her. Well, all these folds down here I'll do, but just a little bit so that she's not completely all white. And then don't forget about her little feet. I'm going to use, just use the same one and then the shadow. And that's done. Now I'm going to use the same. Look at these. They're so well loved. Oh my goodness. I use them all the time. The stitch shape size. This time I'm using the biggest. I think it is. Is this the biggest? Yes. The biggest oval. Hold on. I got to move things around because I've been spreading out as I go here. Okay. I'm going to use the biggest oval to cut it out. Whoops. I did notice that the biggest circle would also work. I, I went back and forth, circle, oval, circle, oval. I ended up picking the oval, but the biggest circle would fit the lamb as well if you wanted to go more circle. Okay, pop her out, and then we just assemble. So there's our, our cheat sheet. Come, 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 come. Okay. I'm just putting a little adhesive to get it to attach to adhere over our vellum doily, which is adorable. Do I have that straight? I don't know if I have that completely straight, but it's straight enough. And then, of course, we're going to use dimensionals. <laughs> of course, that's a no brainer. Oh, I hope I didn't go too low with that one. We'll find out very soon. Actually, I'm going to put it on the chocolate again. It's just easier to have a little oomph behind it. Okay, like that. And there you go. Now, now our ribbon should be pretty dry. I mean, I'm not going to go ruffling it too much, but it should be dry enough that we can adhere this into the inside. Like so. Oops, that was close. Okay, and there you go. So, um... I love it. You have a really sweet Easter card that comes together pretty simple. It's not too many bells and whistles. If you didn't want to heat emboss, you could easily stamp that in memento black as well and just make it that much easier. And then you have a coordinating sort of um, decorative piece for your chocolate. So instead of just handing someone a chocolate, you can make it just a little bit more um, sweet and um, and whatnot. So just a really fun card and gift giving uh, decoration as well. So if you've been watching tonight and would like a chance to win the card, now I can't send you the chocolate, <laughs> but if you'd like a chance to win the card, be sure to um, just make a comment below. Um, just keep in mind that I can only ship the card within residents of the United States, um, but be sure to leave a comment for a chance to win. And thank you so much everyone for joining me. Um, head over to my blog, head over to jamieb.com, J-A-I-M-I-E-B.com. That has all my links to my blog, social media, to request a catalog, and of course, to place an order. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for joining me tonight. I've had so much fun. I will see you back again next week. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.